Ermenistanla nasbetlerin normallaşması. I would also like to touch upon the issue of normalization of relations with Armenia. I would like to state again, the peace negotiations were initiated by Azerbaijan during the Second Karabakh War. At that time, neither Armenia nor any other country in general had developed their own opinion about what the future would hold. It was our initiative. After a while, when we saw that it remained unanswered, we already laid out the basic principles, made them public, and the process begun. But what do we see? We see that Armenia is artificially delaying this issue. Because from the time we sent our first draft to Armenia, there have been 10 exchanges of comments, and each time certain provisions were agreed. That is, there was certain progress in this work. We should state everything the way it is. But at the same time, as months passed, we naturally expected Armenia to share its comments with us more promptly and flexibly. But we saw the exact opposite. We had to wait 70 days to receive the final version from them. On June 24, our comments were sent to them, and they sent us a reply at the end of August or at the beginning of September. So what was this answer? All non-agreed provisions were removed from their version of peace treaty. In other words, such a primitive and inadequate step could not have been expected. Provisions that were removed from the text, that is those proposed to be removed at their request, are important. Without them, the peace treaty will be incomplete. Therefore, such an insincere attitude naturally makes us think. In addition to the factors I have just mentioned, if we put all these facts into a framework, we will see that both the rapid armament, the revenge tendencies, and the fact that Armenia's patrons have raised the issue of Karabakh against us again, this inadequate and insincere attitude in the progress of the peace agreement, the delaying tactics and other issues, suggest that Armenia does not want peace. It wants to buy time and use this time to build up its military potential with the support of its foreign patrons. Representatives of some European countries, not only European, but also other Western countries, have already started working in the Armenian army. A so-called European Peace, or Observer Mission, has been illegally established on our border. While this represents a violation of the agreement reached, I would like to remind both the European Union and Armenia that an agreement was reached at the Prague meeting in 2022. And yes, we also agreed that a small number of observer missions should be stationed on the Armenian side in the direction of the conditional border for only two or three months. So this was agreed with us. But after that, they extended it without our approval, increased their number, representatives from Canada were included, and this actually has become a NATO mission. After that, a binocular diplomacy, namely, policy was carried out against us. Foreign representatives went there day and night and looked at us through binoculars. What did they want to show us? Is this a demonstration or a cheap show? All these factors should make us think carefully, and they do, of course. Therefore, if they are not interested in normalization of relations with Armenia, then it will not happen. In any case, we will not take a step back from our position. Anyone can say what they want, we don't need mediators. It is true that we do not object to some mediation proposals, simply for the sake of political decency. But as a matter of fact, we do not need a mediator. We delimited the state border with Armenia without mediators. We simply told them that the four villages of Gazakh district should be returned to us unconditionally. And I said this for the last time in February this year. I believe that these words were very convincing. And after that, four villages of Gazakh, which were under occupation, were returned to us without any mediators and without any conditions. Thus, we have started not only delimitation, but also demarcation. This is why we don't need any mediators in the negotiations. Armenia should not rely on that either. In general, it should not rely on anyone else. If they want to live in this geography, and if they want to live in the conditions of security, they must make serious adjustments to their policies towards their neighbors. This is first. Second, neither they nor those behind them should ever forget the 30-year occupation. But they want to forget it, and want others to forget it too, as if this occupation never even happened. They should not forget the results of the Second Karabakh War. The Armenian army was crushed. Armenia signed an act of capitulation. After that, I gave the order, and the glorious victory march of the Azerbaijan army was stopped. Today's reality once again shows that this was the right step, and the subsequent events are also obvious. As a result, September 20, the day of full restoration of our sovereignty, should not be forgotten, and this historic truth should always be at the negotiating table. After World War II, no one offered a peace treaty to Nazi Germany. 
Fascist Germany was divided into several parts, and the capitulating fascist state was punished. Here, the capitulated fascist state was not only not punished, they were given all the preferences. America is now giving them $250 million. They will use this money for their internal purposes, while the saved money will be used to buy weapons to kill us. Who bears this responsibility, and who will bear it in the future? Those giving them this money, including the so-called European Peace Facility. Look at the level of hypocrisy. The fund is intended for weapons, and they call it the Peace Facility. Armenia uses it and gets free weapons from France. And this money is not paid either from other places. So this is a serious matter, and I would not like to talk too much about it. Simply put, our terms remain in place. Those arming Armenia should bear in mind that they will be directly responsible for all future developments. And naturally, official territorial claims against us should be stopped. Their constitution should be amended and the Minsk group should be abolished.